bien, ya. Yeah. Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a psychological thriller film, Perfume, the story of a murderer. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. In 18th century Paris, well-developed maritime navigation boosts global trade and industries and commerce thrive. At a wet market of a squalid slum near Paris, a fish vendor gives birth to Jean. He's not her first infant born at work. Jean is motionless at birth, with not even a breath, thinking that he must be another infant born dead. The fish vendor abandons him and continues her work, but Jean makes a loud cry when he smells the stink smell of the wet market. Since this moment on, his life is tightly connected to smells. The fish vendor is accused of abandonment of her baby and is hanged later, ending her fishy life. Jean is raised in an orphanage and has a tough life, but he is particularly obsessive about the scents, caring not much what a freak he seems to other orphans. Logs, fruits, leaves, and even water, everything in the nature, has its scent, which fascinates him. At the age of 13, Jean is sold to a tanner for seven francs, as the orphanage owner regards him as a burden, but she then gets killed by the robbers. Life is not any better in the tanners. Jean keeps toiling for over 10 hours every day. Reveling in all kinds of odors, Jean dreams of crossing the river one day to explore the world of aroma. His first travel to Paris delivering leather with a tanner changes his whole life. The hustle and bustle town has all kinds of scents of soldiers, vendors, and horses, but the most delighting ones to Jean are the scents of upper-class ladies. Someday, Jean's captured by one distinctively enchanting scent mixed with hormones. His supernatural sense of smell leads him to the origin, a young lady with chestnut hair who has a pair of clear eyes on her innocent face. He's deeply obsessive about her scent, which is too magic for words. He follows her and sucks in her body scent greedily. Later, he puts his face into her hand and licks her ball-shaped palm like a freak, which startles the timid girl right away. Jean follows her smelly hormones, chases after her, and catches her in the alley. He shuts her big mouth to avoid making any sound, but suffocates her by accident. To his surprise, her amazing scent fades as her breath weakens. He then strips her body naked so as to smell her better, but the scent soon disappears. Jean then makes up his mind to learn how to preserve scents. Baldini is an Italian perfume maker in Paris who succeeded in making a couple of amazing perfume formulas when he was young, but his creativity dries up as he grows old. When Jean delivers leather to Baldini, he even takes the chance to reproduce the scent of love and soul, the former fashionable perfume with some improvement. Baldini is shocked by his incredible talent for discerning scents, so he buys Jean from the tanner for 50 francs. After the deal, the tanner is surprisingly hit by a fast-moving carriage on the bridge, causing him to fall into the river and drown. Those who abandon Jean seem to be doomed to die of an accident. After that, Jean starts to work at Baldini's perfume workshop. He revitalizes the perfumer's business with amazing new formulas, and he also learns more knowledge about perfume. One night in his dream, Jean sees the girl again, whose body and hormone odor he revels in. When waking up the next morning, he asks Baldini to teach him how to convert scents into perfume and promises he will create the best formulas for him in return. Baldini agrees gladly. The next day, baskets of roses are shipped to them. Baldini begins to teach Jean the skill of preserving scents. They dump the roses into a distiller and capture the scent through steam distillation. Baldini also probably talks about grass, the town of scents, which is reputed for the world's finest perfumers. The refining of rose essential oil continues late into the night. The next morning, Jean finds some iron chains, glass pieces, copper blocks, and even a cat. He distills them one by one till late into the night, but he gets no refined oil. Hearing Jean's desperate wail, Baldini rises from the bed to check what is going on in the basement. He angrily tells Jean that no living being's odor can be refined through distillation. The reality is so cruel that Jean faints to the ground, as it is the meaning of life for him to capture wonderful scents. Right now, he knows that to possess a girl's odor is to possess the girl. If he had known how to preserve the body odor of the girl with chestnut hair, it would not have vanished along with her death. Jean lies in bed seriously ill. He asks Baldini how to preserve human odor. Baldini answers he can learn the mysterious inflourage process in grass. His words bring hope back to Jean, and he recovers in just a week. Before Jean leaves for grass, Baldini demands Jean provide him with the recipes of 100 finest formulas in exchange for his freedom. Baldini enjoys his happiest day ever. He lies in bed happily, holding the notebook, written with recipes of 100 finest formulas. However, he soundly sleeps through the building collapse and never wakes up again. It is a long journey to grass, 
Gene is excited by every kind of scent from the endless wildness, and he can't rest his mind. Exhausted, he enters a dark cave to sleep. When he wakes up inside the dark cave, Gene smells himself and is surprised to realize that he has no body odor. He is puzzled, since even a worm has its own scent. The body odor is the soul of life, meaning that he has no soul, but he's still alive. This poses a huge challenge to his knowledge. Without odor, there will be no trace of his being in the world. He ponders over and over, and decides to create the best ever perfume, which will prove his existence in value, so he strides toward grass. Upon arrival, Jean catches another magic hormone scent of a girl, as fascinating as that of the Paris girl. It comes from a girl, who also has chestnut hair. It's Rich Eyes, daughter of the famous and wealthy businessman, living a graceful and delicate life. Her beautiful and pure body has a charming odor. Grass is the town of scents, with flowers growing in every piece of field. Lavenders are picked up in the field and sent to the perfumers to extract essential oil by inflourage. When Jean has learned this new skill, he starts his plan of making the world's best ever perfume. One night, he hunts his first game, a smelly girl who dates her hormone partner. Jean strips her off and puts her into the oil vat directly for refinement, without hormone let go. But in the end, he fails in extracting her odor. His next prey is a prostitute. Jean kills her brutally. He cuts off her hair, soaks her body in coconut oil, and then refines the odor by distillation. This time, he succeeds in preserving the body odor. Meanwhile, the town of grass is covered in panic, as one girl after another is missing. Jean's ambition is to make 12 bottles of individual scents by refining the body odors of girls so that he can make the best ever perfume, as Baldini told him. At Rich Eyes' birthday party in her father's luxury manor, she comes to the lawn to play hide-and-seek with the twin sisters. Jean takes the twin sisters away, but leaves Rich Eyes alone, as he decides that she will be the last 13th scent. This time, he improves the process by soaking the twin girls with coconut oil, wrapping them with cloth, and then refining by distillation. The essential oil extracted by the improved process has a stronger scent. The scents begin to show the irresistible magic of changing people's minds and moods. The rage foreman who attempts to beat Jean becomes kind once he smells the drop of a scent. At the same time, Jean needs more body odors to fill up the 12 bottles, so he continues his cruel slaughter of beautiful girls to capture their scents, turning brass into a town of horror. People believe that there is a terrified hormone hunter wandering around, so they enforce curfews in the city and strengthen security measures, but more girls get killed. At last, Jean has filled the 12 bottles with 12 individual scents, but he has one more empty bottle to fill up, and his last game is unluckily the hormone smelly rich eyes. Someday when people are attending a sermon in the church, a safeguard rushes in and declares that the murderer has been caught. Released from panic, people come out to the streets and cheer, unaware that the man is just a scapegoat for law enforcement. Rich Eyes' father is unconvinced by that, so he decides to leave grass with his daughter by ship. The night before departure, he takes Rich Eyes to sleep in a roadside inn. Jean tracks her smelly scent and sneaks into her room. He cuts off her hair and extracts her body scent. With the 13th bottle of scent filled, Jean realizes his ultimate ambition. He succeeds in making the magic best ever perfume in the world. However, the prostitute victim's dog traces her smell to the place where her body was buried, and more corpses of the missing girls are dug out. Jean's evil slaughter is soon exposed. He's captured and tortured, and the death penalty is announced to him. On the day of his execution, the execution ground is packed with a furious crowd. Gene is kept captive with shackles on his hands and chains on his legs. He holds tight his bottle of magic perfume. The moment he removes the bottle lid, his whole body smells an enchanting, exotic scent, which dispels the rage of the escorting guards. Gene puts on the blue suit of the foreman's and steps into the blue luxury Ferrari carriage, offered by the escorting guards. Upon his arrival at the execution ground, the furious crowd falls into the spell of his enchanting smell. They look at him with admiration and yearning, when Jean comes onto the guillotine, the executioner takes off his mask, kneels down in front of him, and shouts to the crowd that he's innocent. Jean applies a drop of the perfume over his girly handkerchief and waves it toward the crowd. When the enchanting scent permeates the air, the crowd is speechless for a moment with their mouths wide open. They stretch their arms toward Jean, calling him the hormone angel. Even Rich Eyes' father, who is the most resentful, forgets his revenge. The perfume endows Jean with the essence of innocence and beauty, and arouses people's desire for love, turning the execution into an orgy. Because of that, the foreman is taken as another scapegoat, convicted for all the murders, and executed soon. After that, Jean returns to Paris, 
Right now, he has the most powerful tool in his hand, the perfume, which can control people's desire for love and hormones, and would definitely give him the power to go, to see, to conquer. However, he chooses to come back to the wet fish market, his birthplace. He pours the whole bottle of perfume down from his head, and the nearby poor people, hungered for the lofty scent, go on a rampage and swarm to devour him up eventually. In such a way, he disappears from the world. All that is left are his clothes and the empty perfume bottle. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.